This video is the fourth in a series of tutorials on biological nomenclature. The first three videos dealt with the history of biological nomenclature, touched on some reason why the standardization of nomenclature is important, and gave details about gene and QTL nomenclature. This video covers nomenclature of rat strains. The Rat Genome and Nomenclature Committee and the International Committee on Standard Genetic Nomenclature have compiled a set of rules for rat strain nomenclature, and we try to follow these while naming rat strains. A copy of these rules can be accessed from the RGD website at rgd.mcw.edu. Before we begin talking about the details of naming strains, I would like to point out the importance of registering your research group, lab, or institution at the Institute for Laboratory Animal Research, or ILAR. If your lab has an ILAR code, this will be used in naming your strain. If it does not, you should contact RGD in order to receive a unique lab code for your group or institution. This will be assigned and used for naming all strains which your group or institution develops. It is a three to four letter code that identifies your group as the one where the strain was developed and or maintained. It is added to the strain symbol after the strain has been maintained at a facility for more than 20 generations. A maximum of three ILAR codes can be added to a given strain symbol. We encourage all our users to register their labs at ILAR and get an ILAR code as it ensures proper recognition of your research group. When assigning a systematic nomenclature to a strain, we have to know the details of how the strain was developed and the history of breeding which determines the type of strain. Then we use an established format to assign a symbol and name to the strain. Any old symbols or additional abbreviated symbols used by the authors and their groups are kept in the database as aliases, so that even if a user searches RGD for an unofficial symbol, he or she is directed to the correct strain report page. Here are a few examples of strain nomenclature. Inbred strains are bred in a closed colony for more than 20 generations. They can be traced back to their common ancestors. Some examples of inbred strains are BN, SS, and SR. If rats from an inbred strain are separated and subsequently bred for more than 20 generations and are genetically diverse due to factors such as environmental conditions, food, etc., then they are called substrains. These are named as the strain symbol, a slash, then the ILAR or lab code of the group where they are maintained. When moved to another facility and maintained there for more than 20 generations, then the ILAR lab code of the second facility is added to their symbol. If they are then moved again, another ILAR is added. Once they have three ILAR codes, then the first one is dropped if a new ILAR needs to be added. Recombinant inbred strains are generated by crossing two inbred strains followed by more than 20 generations of brother and sister mating. The symbol has the abbreviations of the two strains followed by a serial number. Outbred strains are ones where the stocks are not bred with their own siblings or even a close relative. In this case, the ILAR code is added as a prefix followed by a colon and then the strain symbol. For congenic strains, the symbol is composed of the symbol of the recipient strain, period, symbol of the donor strain, hyphen, the differential allele in italics, slash, then the ILR code of the lab which developed the strain. The differential allele is displayed as the names of the markers which delineate introgressed DNA segment, such as D1 rat 475 to D1 rat 90. If there are multiple fragments incorporated, then all of these are mentioned. On the other hand, if only a single gene is introgressed, then just the gene symbol is listed. The symbols for chromosomic strains start with the host strain, hyphen, then number of the substituted chromosome. The strain of origin for the substituted chromosome 
appears in superscript, followed by a slash, then the ILAR code. We know that the guidelines provided by the RGNC is a long document, so to make it easier for our users, we have a simplified condensed version of the guidelines available on our website at rgd.mcw.edu. We encourage our users to submit their data for strains, gene variants, QTLs, and SSLPs to RGD. When you submit directly to RGD, our curators make sure the symbol and name comply with the RGNC nomenclature guidelines and that the current ILAR codes are used. We register these strains in RGD and assign a unique RGD identifier to it. Submitters can then use this ID in their publications for unambiguous identification of their strains. Submission is a very simple process. All you do is click on the Data tab at the top of the RGD page, then click Submit Data on the blue menu bar. This leads you to our submission forms for strains, gene variants, and QTLs. We ask for simple contact info on the PIs and the submitter whom we can contact if we need some clarification. For strains, we ask for the strain symbol, type, origin, and source if there are any published references associated with this particular strain. It's here in these forms that the submitter has the option of choosing whether they want their data to be public or not. Needless to say, we are equipped to hold the data and will not release it on our website until the submitter allows us to or the paper is published. Once the data is released, it is visible as a strain report and, for strains such as congenics, in our gbrowse tool where one can see the genes, SNPs, and other genomic factors which overlap the congenic region, as well as the corresponding human syntenic regions. If you need help with submitting your data, or with naming your strain before submission, RGD curators are always available to help. Contact us at rgd.data at mcw.edu or by using the contact us link on any RGD page. If you would like information on naming genes or QTLs, you can go to RGD's video tutorial website and watch the respective nomenclature videos. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.